Oh hi there, I didn't know you were watching. Today I want to show you how to create these two amazing fabric shaders using some of the few Chocofur textures. Please remember you can download all of the free Chocofur shaders from the link provided in the video description and now let's just jump into it. I'm gonna start with this very basic scene setup you can see on the screen. Let's just set up our workspace, switch to the shader editor here, switch to the material tab here and add a new material. So the first way I will create this very basic shader will be by dragging and dropping the Choco 4 Fabric Solid 21 texture to our scene. And by the way, you will, can also download the entire scene with all of the setups from the link provided in the video description. And the first thing you wanna do right now is connecting the color inputs here. So this is the very, very first glance on the material. Now, what I usually do with fabric shaders is decreasing the specular to let's say 0.2 and then going up with the roughness to uh, one. So you can see now we don't have any glossy reflections like these. And the settings you wanna focus on are those sheen values here. So if you set it up to one, you can see our material got this white kind of glow on its edges. But I think if you're recreating the fabric shaders from real life, this value is a little bit too low. So I'm usually using two here. You can just type the value into it by click left clicking on, on the slider. And if this is too high, you can always go a little bit lower. So let's say 1.5. And I, I'm usually using 1.5 or 2, something between these two values. Another thing you want to have within your fabric shader is the bump. So a little bit differentiation within the surface. Let's press Shift A within the material editor and add a vector bump node. So what you want to do is connecting the color input to the height input, then connecting the normals here. And basically this is the first hand effect you're getting. So this is not that good. Let's just decrease the strength to 0.1 and distance to 0.1. If we disconnect it from normals, we don't actually see much difference, something happening here. So to have a better preview of your bump, what I'm usually doing is setting up the material color to black and reducing the roughness to almost mirrory like. And right now I can see very clearly how the bump looks like. So let's maybe increase it to 0.25. Yeah, I would say that's enough for this kind of fabric. So let's go back with everything. And yeah, voila, this is the very basic, the easiest fabric shader you can create in Blender. Now I will show you very similar technique, but a little bit more advanced. And I think the one giving you much more flexibility and adjustments. As you can see, I have removed the principled BSDF shader. And the reason for that is I want to use the very simple Fuse BSDF and I'm using it because in the principal BSDF we were using the roughness of value one anyways, meaning the material has barely any reflections. So we can simplify its look and probably also decrease render times using much simpler nodes here. So I'm using the diffuse BSDF. I'm just gonna plug in the color to the input and yeah, we are getting the very, very basic effect. So what we want to have right now, what's the most crucial part of the fabric shader is this white glow on the edges. And I'm gonna build it from scratch using just those very, very basic shaders. So we have two diffuse BSDF shaders. Now I'm gonna add a mix shader here, connect them both. So if I use this slider, you can see nothing happens because we have the same texture. But let's now add color and RGB curves. I'm gonna plug one curve graph here, copy it, drag and drop and plug it here. So for this one, let's set up, or maybe let's go down with the values. And with this one, let's go up with the values. So what we have right now, you can see this slider simply 
uh, lets us choosing which of those nodes is visible. If we set it to 0.5, we have a 50-50 mix. But if we go to the input uh, layer weight, we can add this node, connect the facing input with the FAC input, and you can see right now this white color is only visible on the edges. So what's really great about this technique is you can fine tune the actual look of this white glow. If we add one more RGB curves and plug them between these two nodes, you can see by adding and manipulating the handles right now, we are able to make this white glow less or more visible. Or we can even go crazy with the settings and create something like this, which looks like a velvet material. If we do the right setup here, I'm not gonna focus on that right now, just wanted to show you, you can actually go very crazy with the settings. So anyway, let's go down with those values here and you can see if we have the curve flat within those areas, this white color is not visible, it's barely visible and it's basically not visible when we are facing this shader direct, directly with the camera. So if I just play around with this one handle now, you can see I can make this white glow more or less visible on the edges only. So I think this is a pretty, pretty interesting effect. Let's maybe increase the color, the general color of the shader slightly. And yeah, I think this, this method gives you much more room to play around with the final look. So what we still have to do is adding the bump to the material and without the principal BSDF shader, we have to do it a little bit different. Uh, so let's connect this normal input to those two nodes we have here. Uh, I suggest not connecting it to the displacement node here because, well, it doesn't work to be honest. So let's just connect it as previously, set up the strength value to 0.2, distance to 0.1 and yeah, voila. So right now you can see the comparison of two shaders. Uh, you can let me know in the comments which one of them looks better in your opinion. And now let's move and create a bit more advanced fabric shader. As you can see, I'm using the node setup we've already established as a base of the new shader. The only difference is the texture I'm using here. It's Choco for Fabric Pattern 02. And what I will try to achieve is getting a metallic golden look within those yellowy areas. So to do that, we need one more shader set up here. Let's press Shift A, choose Principled BSDF. Let's now connect it as a main input. And yeah, let's try to create a metallic look. So I'm increasing this value to one. Um, let's play around with the color a little bit. I'm looking for a golden look, so something yellowy orange like that should do the trick. Let's maybe increase the saturation slightly. And the value I'm usually using here, it's just point, uh, 12. yeah. So this gives us more or less a golden look, metallic look. Now what we want to do is mixing this fabric setup with this metallic setup. So let's copy the mix shader node plug it in here and connect the dots. So what we have right now is not necessarily the effect we are looking for. So we want this metallic uh, shader to be visible only within the yellowy areas. To do that, we need a special input here to define those areas. So to do this, I will just copy the diffuse BSDF node plug in the color texture here and use this as a main input for now so we know what's happening. What I will try doing is creating a mask that will mix our shaders. Let me press Shift A, go to Converter and use the separate RGB node. What it does, it uh, gives us uh, red, green and blue outputs of this texture I've just plugged in. If you want to learn a bit more about it, please check out another link in the video description and the tutorial linked in this video right now. So anyways, um, 
I'm looking for the biggest contrast possible I can find. Probably the default red channel uh, does the good job for me. So let's now use converter color ramp node to even to increase the contrast even more. I'm going to use the ease uh, method of interpolation here. And you can see when I move the sliders left and right, the black and white values are becoming more uh, limited. So I think this looks pretty well as a mask. Let's see the effect it does. So I'm reconnecting this main mix shader node and now plugging in our color ramp. So yeah, I think I think we got a pretty nice effect. What we are still missing, I think, is uh, the bump within our metallic material. So to do that, we can very quickly just plug in the normal here. And now I think we have much better results. So what's really great about this shader, uh, it might look a little bit complex right now, but if you've been creating it from the very beginning, you usually know which one of the nodes does what. So again, we know this curves node is editing the base fabric shader. This one is probably, I mean, not probably, <laughs> is irresponsible for the general brightness of this fabric. And this principled BSDF is responsible for the metallic look. What's really great about this shader, we can now use this color ramp to uh, let's say add a little bit of metallic golden feel into the fabric itself. So if I just move the handles left and right, um, let's maybe change to B spline. Yeah, and now you can see when I move this handle to the left and this one as well, we are getting this very, very nice metallic highlight within the fabric. So it's like we are using this golden threads as a base for this shader. Pretty nice result in my opinion. Might be used in many different scenarios if you're creating upholstery or some antique kind of uh, furnishings, uh, carpets and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a really powerful method using the mix shader notes and the other notes like curves and so on for boosting your creativity. So that's it for this video. Thanks everyone for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please remember you can support Blender Development by donating to the Blender Development Fund. Also, you can support our channel by getting some of our Blender assets from the Chocofor store. That's it for today. See you in another video. Bye bye.